Hey everyone, this is Miyoko. We're doing the Q&A today. We've got a lot of questions. We're here in the vineyard atop Rancho Compasión uh, with the folks from Moose Mountain Vineyards, another vegan winery down in San Martin. And they are pruning for me, teaching me how to prune. And they're going to be making some Pinot Noir uh, for Rancho and for themselves. All right. So today we're here at Rancho Compasión. And we are harvesting, or we're pruning clone 777. It's a Pinot clone. It's one of my favorite Pinot clones because they have such small berries and full of color and a lot of flavor. Um, they haven't been pruned in two years, so it's a little bit of a job, but we're gonna get them back in shape and we're gonna help Miyoko make some delicious Pinot Noir this year at uh, Moose Mountain Vineyards, which by the way is, uh, organic, uh, sustainably farmed, and purely vegan wine. Um, everybody says, how could it be a vegan wine? Every wine is vegan, but it's not. About 80% the, of the wines in the world are made with either egg white or fish bladder. And that's to kind of pull out some of the particulate matter to make it clearer. We just use gravity. So we don't add anything to our wine. We want to keep that, that vegan aspect going and it's much healthier for our bodies. But we're just enjoying this beautiful view up here in West Marin and having a great time helping Miyoko out. We've got a lot of questions and one of the first questions is, what's my favorite fast, quick and easy dish to make? And I would say it would be some sort of one pot Japanese dish where everything got, goes into the pot together and sim I am the master of one pot dishes. I have so many of them or one skillet dishes. So I might put several components in one dish and dinner is ready in 15 minutes. It could be, I'm gonna post a picture of one. I made one recently of these delicious mushrooms. I opened up some, uh, some uh, beans that I had lying around and some vegetables from the garden and Oh, it was a beautiful dish and I seasoned it all with the same sauce and it was one beautiful dinner. So I will post that picture. Well, thank you for asking this question. Will the Vegan Good Life become a Hulu or Netflix show? Um, well, you know, it depends on whether there's a rich producer that would like to make it that. Uh, I don't have that plan right now. Right now, we're just trying to scrape by on, on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, That would be fun. For sure. You're amazing and inspiring. What do you do in a typical day? Oh, well, I, I prune vineyards. <laughs> Actually, that's the first day. No, normally I have a very slow start. My, I'm not like one of these people that just gets up in the morning and can go. So I, uh, you know, I drink my cappuccino. I always make a cappuccino in the morning. Um, take the dogs out. Um, I have work that I have to do for Rancho Compassion. Uh, I'm working on a book right now, so I work on recipes. Um, I am trying to avoid being on my computer. I do not, I realize I don't like digital things. And so I try to spend my time actually connecting with people in, uh, and, and doing things. So I'm finding it harder and harder to actually um, look at anything online. Uh, even though we're doing something online right now. Um, so every day looks different. I also travel, as you know, um, uh, give talks. Um, I mentor people, people a lot of, uh, I don't know, once or twice a week, there's an entrepreneur, somebody who calls me and wants advice, so I spend time with them. So I do a variety of things. Um, every day is different. What do I eat in a day? Um, I often have something like oatmeal with hemp seeds and chia seeds and dried fruit and walnuts in the morning um, with my cappuccino. Um, I tend to eat very simply, a lot of vegetables, a lot of whole grains, a lot of beans. Uh, and now that I'm an empty nester by myself, meals are sometimes just whatever it is I pick from the garden with some, some rice or beans or, or pasta, very, very simply. Uh, the question is, what supplements do I take? I've been vegan for 40 years plus, and uh, uh, I do occasionally take some vitamin B12, but otherwise, I've never really taken supplements. Just, I consider whole foods to be supplements enough. The type of exercise I do, that's the question is, what type of exercise do I do, has changed from running. I used to do a lot of running and weightlifting when I was growing up. 
Um, I did CrossFit all during my 50s, and now I probably do more hiking. I also lift weights still. Um, I do a lot of walking. Uh, I walk an average of five miles a day. Uh, up and down the hill here, all around the sanctuary, out with the dogs, uh, etc. And, you know, as our bodies get uh, older, you know, you, you can't push yourself as, as hard, but I do try to push myself. Um, but then some days I'm just not in the mood or I'm tired and I've learned to listen to my body. Am I going to develop a Gruyere like vegan cheese is the question. Um, I, that was one of my favorite cheeses, and yes, I am working on that right now. And if I manage to develop it in time for the publication of the Vegan Creamery, then I will have a recipe in there to share with the world. Next question. I have never seen you posting Japanese recipes. Why is that? Can't wait for the book to come out. You're great. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know what? I have a whole Japanese cookbook called Japanese Cooking, Traditional and contemporary or something like that came out in 1999 I believe um, and I have actually uh, published or done some Japanese cooking there is a show did we do what show, what did we do I can't remember I did the eggplant tofu dish you know I should do a sukiyaki episode so let's do that let's do some Japanese recipes I'm going to Japan on Sunday and maybe I'll do some videos from Japan the question was, what was my favorite menu item from Madame Miyoko's? That was not a restaurant. That was actually a little pound cake business, a, ba a, vegan, a bakery in Japan that I started, uh, where I used to deliver pound cakes uh, in Tokyo to various stores, carrying them in a backpack. I had 60 pound cakes because they were a pound each, so my backpack was 60 pounds, and I delivered them all around Tokyo. Um, and uh, no, so that that was really it. And then I had some bakery items and did a couple of so-called road shows at department stores. How does my vegan advocacy affect my family? Well, my two daughters are vegan activists themselves. So they are, I think one of them is probably going to be even a bigger advocate than, than me uh, in, in the future, not just for animals, but for all kinds of social justice for people, for planet, uh, really thinking globally about how our food system impacts people all over the world as well as animals. So vegan advocacy, uh, being an activist is who I am at the core. And I believe that, I hope I've inspired my daughters to follow uh, in my footsteps and, and they're out there posting. So um, I think it's, we all have to do that. When is my new book coming out? The uh, Homemade Vegan, no. What's it called? <laughs> the Vegan Creamery will be out, I believe, in summer of 2025. Thoughts on lab stuff. The question is, what's the future of veganism? And what, what are my thoughts on lab stuff? And I guess you're talking about like cell-based meat or whatever. Um, so a lot of people are against this um, because they, they see that, well, it's untested. It's not good for human health, etc. Um, and other people say, but if it saves animals, um, then it's all good for me. Um, it's good with me. And I am one of these people that believes that we have to think beyond animals. Animals are absolutely fundamental. I hope I didn't cut the wrong branch off. But we also have to think about the impact of whatever it is we're making on societies and communities around the world. My concern about anything that comes that requires billions of dollars to produce will just consolidate power in the hands of corporations and they will be driving the food system. Uh, right now, that is kind of where we're going. We're going to a place where those that are making decisions about what people eat are uh, very wealthy corporations and individuals. And so um, I am for creating equity in the food system, giving opportunities for everyone to participate, small producers, farmers, etc. cetera. Um, and so I am not a fan of lab-produced foods. Uh, because I think we need to really consider the economics of the food system and being able to provide uh, opportunities for more people. And I have a lot more to say about that, but I'll keep it to that right now. What's my favorite Japanese dish? Um, gee, um, gosh, there's so many, but when I go to Japan, I just want to eat 
everything Japanese. I'm, natto is one of my favorite foods. It's fermented soybeans, and I absolutely love natto. It's just so good on a bowl of rice. The biggest misconception about vegans, that's the question. What is the biggest misconception about vegans? Well, that they don't get enough protein, that uh, they don't eat a wide variety of food. Uh, they're eating the same thing all the time. Um, and, um, you know, the protein myth we all know about. But at the same time, most of the people I know who go vegan go, oh my God, I'm eating a wider variety of food than I ever did uh, when I ate meat. The question is, do I have any upcoming vegan tours? And yes, I am going to an off the beaten track part of Italy called Le Marche uh, along the Adriatic in June. And we still have a few tickets left or a few rooms left. So if you're interested in coming to Italy with me and learning all about the traditional foods of Italy that are naturally vegan, seeing beautiful sights, not hearing English because we'll be in a very uh, remote part of Italy seeing the true Italian lifestyle and forming community with your newfound friends, then um, yes, uh, check it out. Uh, you can message me on Instagram or go to Tierno Tours. We'll put the link in the description down below. The hardest place to travel to as a vegan um, to. that I have traveled to. Um, gosh, you know, everything changes so rapidly that there are places that were difficult to travel to in the past, like in just let's, let's say the Midwest, uh, that now has so many vegan options. Um, France, when I went there a couple of, I don't know, 15 years ago, it was really hard to find vegan options and now they're everywhere. So I think it's just becoming easier everywhere. If you just have to look around, luckily we have these wonderful uh, apps like Happy Cow that can help. What dish do I, would I consider overrated? Um, mac and cheese? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, burgers, uh, vegan nuggets, fried chicken. Would I ever date a non-vegan? Okay, I have to be honest, no. I, I'm, you know, I guess I could be in the market now again. And no, I, I just don't think I could at this point in my life date a non-vegan. Um, and not just, even a vegan for health reasons, I want to be. I want to be with somebody who is an activist who really cares about animals and people and planet. Do you have a vegan cottage cheese recipe? A vegan cottage cheese recipe. Um, well, I'm hoping that I will have one for the upcoming cookbook. The question is. Um, is the vegan pantry book available in the UK? I thought it was, but if it's not, I have to ask my publisher because I don't handle the distribution. So I don't really know, but I thought it was available there. Huh, interesting. We'll find out, we will find out. I know it's, it's been translated into several different languages uh, and it is available in multiple countries. So have to find out. Uh, so the question is, how did I start? Well, I started many, many years ago when I went vegan. In fact, this is funny. This isn't quite ready, but one of the first cheeses I made was this marinated tofu that turned into kind of a creamy thing. Uh, I'm putting it on a salad right now. But cheese was, like for many people, for me as well, the, one of the hardest things to give up. And so when I went vegan, I cheated initially because I just couldn't resist some pizza or some brie or camembert or something. And so I finally got to a point where I just said, enough is enough, I need to figure out how to make this. And in the 2000s, I started to seriously experiment beyond you know, what I had done in the past. I would like to know what you feed your beautiful dogs. My dogs eat V-Dog. They love, so they've eaten V-Dog since they were puppies. And uh, so they eat, the dog kibble and they now have this happy harvest this canned stuff so i mix them both i also give them other things like i have some leftover farinata in here that's the chickpea pancake thing and so i'm i mix that in there as well too um and so yeah they eat a vegan diet although they're not 100 percent vegan in the sense that my dog koan will find odd scraps of i don't know he'll find like a deer bone when we're hiking or something and I can't, just can't stop him, but I, I feed them a vegan diet.
Do I make mayonnaise? Oh, yes, I do. In fact, we have one coming up in an episode uh, um, where I make a vegan egg salad, a curried egg salad, but I think I'm gonna do one on Instagram too because it's really fast. The question is about the saturated fat content of coconut oil. And there's no, just because you're vegan doesn't mean you have to eat coconut oil. I rarely eat coconut oil. There's a lot of vegan cheese recipes that contain it, but they don't have to have it. Depends on the, on the cheese. Now there are also, I'm not a doctor, there is a different type of thinking about whether or not it actually does raise your cholesterol. Some people say because of the MCTs, it does not. Uh, and so I'm not an expert um, on coconut oil. I do eat, use it judiciously, not very often. Uh, and I, I do have some recipes that contain coconut oil because it's the only thing that works. And then I have recipes that have no oil whatsoever. Um, so it really, really depends. Um, and you do not have to eat coconut oil to be vegan. Um, in fact, no one ate coconut oil in the United States. Coconut oil was not even a thing until about 10, 15 years ago. People, it, it just sort of like quinoa or a lot of these other things just sort of blew up. I was born in Japan, in Yokohama, a little, uh, in a little town outside of the city of Yokohama and lived there till I was almost seven. Then I moved here to the United States and I w was raised in Mill Valley, California. Did you raise your children vegan and were you pregnant? Uh, were you vegan pregnant? I was vegan when I was pregnant and I raised my children vegan at home and vegetarian outside. I didn't, there was not really like a mommy support group when they were growing up. Um, I was, I didn't, was, I was conflicted about do I want to limit what they can eat when they're outside? So, you know, if they go to the birthday party, they're the only kids that can't have the birthday cake, et cetera. Um, if I were to have kids today, I would do it differently. I would just say, hey, we're going to be vegan all the time. But uh, when they were growing up, they were vegan at home and vegetarian outside. Is there a business venture that I would still be interested in trying? Um, maybe something on a smaller regional local scale, maybe a little restaurant, maybe a cheese shop. Hmm. The question is if I will do some giveaways. I probably should do a cookbook giveaway. I've got uh, five cookbooks that I could give away. So let's do a cookbook giveaway. That'll be fun, huh? Um, and if there are other giveaways that we could do too, we did, we did one, but let's think of some others. Do you have any other creators or vegan food uh, recipe developers that inspire you? Um, do I have any? There's a lot. Oh my God, there's just so many amazing creators today. Like, I don't even need to be here, to be honest. Um, except to uh, show you that, you know, I drop things too in the kitchen and spill things so that you can feel more comfortable. That's really my skill. Um, you know, there was a time when vegan food was pretty boring 30 years ago, but today it is so exciting. There's so many people doing cool things. There's the, the guy that does the lion's mane. Well, there's Gaz Oakley, obviously. He's amazing. There's the Korean vegan. There's Plant U. Um, there, uh, God, what's the guy who's always doing the lion's mane stuff? Um, I'm blanking right now, but you know, my Instagram feed is just full of people that are doing exciting things. There's young people. They're, you know, they're barely out of high school that are cooking and doing exciting things. Um, and it's just, I think it's just a really, really exciting time. A special night out to eat. I love Millennium in uh, Oakland. That's one of my standbys. It's been around forever. Eric Tucker is an amazing chef. Um, especially their pizzas. Oh my God, on Monday nights they have pizza night. Best pizza in the world. Uh, so I love Millennium. Um, I love Shizen in San Francisco as well. Um, Bay Area doesn't have a lot of vegan options, unfortunately. So, yeah. When did I start my sanctuary? What inspired me to do so? I started it in 2015 after moving here and someone reached out to me, a friend of mine named Jacinda, who was working at another sanctuary at the time. And she said, hey, we got these two goats that need a home. Can you take them? And they came and I fell in love with them. And that was the beginning. That was absolutely the beginning. The question is, will I go on a book tour for my new book? And I absolutely plan to go on a book tour for that. Um, so in 2015, I not only am I going to go on a book tour, I'm going to travel with cheese 
and sample it out. So I'm going to definitely be planning that. The only thing I want to speak to is get thee in the kitchen and cook. I mean, we need to recreate the experience, the, the tradition of preparing food, and not just by ourselves, but together as community. Cooking brings people together. If you can have a cooking party instead of a potluck, make it a cooking party where you all cook together. It brings us together. It's so much more fun. It's no longer labor or a chore. It becomes a fun activity. And it's so much better than just like going to the movie. So get back in the kitchen, cook, create community, share food with everybody. That is how we find our humanity. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in to the Q&A. And we'll be back next week with some more fun recipes on The Vegan Good Life with Miyoko.